Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on modeling a glass pitcher in Cinema 4D. This is Pete Merrick with Triplet 3D. So one of the main things that we're trying to figure out here is how to create this upper lip, uh, this top lip. So right, you can see it's uh, curving down a little bit and it, it kind of juts out on the sides. So we're going to figure out how to create this thing in Cinema 4D. Alright, so let's jump right in and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into our front view and we're going to configure this viewport. So in options, let's go configure and we're just going to grab one of those images. I think it was the second one and we'll open that up and we want to scale this image to the correct size. So this glass pitcher would probably be somewhere about 16 inches or so. So what I'll do is I'll create a cube and I'll take this cube in the Y. I'll specify 16 inches. I don't know if that's exact or not. It could be 12 inches or 14, but uh, 16 sounds pretty good. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to scale this uh, image so it matches. So we'll go back into options, configure, and what we're going to do is scale this up a little bit and we're going to offset it in the Y. Okay, pretty good. And what we need to do is offset it in the X a little bit so it's centered right on the um, on the Y axis and then we can take our cube and I'll just delete it. So to get started what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a bezier spline and there's a few different ways that you can create this if you want to create the foot separately you can do that because it'll be a solid piece of glass or you can create it all in one spline so I'm just gonna create it all in one so I'm just gonna start with my bezier spline. I'm going to use my reference image to start modeling the the base of this. Something like that. And then this will come up to somewhere over here. And then I want the glass to start. So at this point I'm going to go back in to my configure viewport and I'm going to offset my image in the Y just so it's kind of lined up with my spline right here. Okay, so now I'm going to continue creating the spline so it kind of matches the profile of my glass pitcher. Create that little curve. And what I want to do is I want to create the spline all the way to the tip of this um, top lip. Okay, so I got, I have this point selected on the top right here. So now I want to go back and manipulate my points. I'm just going to, with the point selected, I'm going to choose my move tool. And I'm going to make this curve, follow that profile, and then I'm going to come back down here and tighten these up a little bit. So this, the first point that we created, it's a little bit off of position, so I'm going to specify 0 in the X and 0 in the Y in the uh, coordinates manager, then hit apply. And then with the second point, I want to create, I want to add 0 in that axis. All right, now we can start refining this a little bit better. So maybe this is a tight little area right here. So I'll manipulate that point, take this thing and move it over. I'll take this curve, this point rather, move it over. Okay, so now we have our basic profile. So let's take our spline and we'll put it right, right inside of the lathe nerves. We want to come back into our spline. Actually, this is looking a little bit too tight down here, so I'm just going to manipulate my spline points a little bit. I'll just grab these two points and push them out. Something like that. Okay, let's go into our spline now, and into in intermediate points, we're going to change this to uniform. And we're going to change this number. Let's say we're going to bring that down to Let's see what two looks like. One. We'll leave it at one. So now we have our basic profile. All right. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lathe nerves, hit Command C, Command V on the keyboard to duplicate it, and I'm going to hide the first lathe nerves in the viewport and in the in the render. And I'm going to take my duplicated lathe nerves and make it editable. Now in our point mode, we want to go into the front view and start manipulating these points to kind of follow this curve right here. Oops. 
Okay, I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to bring these two down. Bring these two down. All right, so just continue manipulating these points until you have a general sh the general shape of this top lip. There's that. Now we'll grab these, bring those down a little bit, maybe move them over slightly. Grab these two at the top. Grab this one, move that over. Okay, there's our general shape. So now what we want to do is let's check out what we created in the perspective view. It's looking pretty decent so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some of these points and start scaling them in. And we'll go into our front view and I'll just grab a few points, something like this. And with only select visible elements checked or unchecked, it's going to select all the way through our model. So at this point, we can grab our scale tool and start scaling those in like that. We can grab a few of these other points right here. Now at this point, what we can do is we can drop this into a hypernerves. All right, we could take a render real quick. And that's looking pretty decent so far. Okay. Actually, I'm going to turn off my environment so we don't see that in our render right now. It's looking pretty decent. If you need to go back in and scale some of these points, you could do that. You could turn off the hypernerves, go into the side view, scale some of these back in. They look like they're sticking out a little bit too far. So we'll just grab our scale tool. Okay, cool. Let's see what this looks like. Turn our hypernerves back on. It's looking pretty decent. Okay, so at this point what we want to do is we want to add some uh, thickness to this. And the way that we're going to do that is I'll go into my deformers and add an explosion effects. And I'll make that a child of the lathe nerves. And right away what's going to happen is it's going to explode our entire model. So what we want to do is we want to go into object and in the time we'll set this to zero. And that's going to give us some weird thickness on our, on our picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the thickness and let's just set this to 0.25 and that's going to give us some thickness. You could play around with um, how thick you need this to be, but that's basically what you need to do to create this picture. The way that we're going to create the handle is we're going to go into our front view again and I'm going to go back into a Bezier spline tool and finish it off with something like that. Okay, that's a pretty good starting point. Okay, there's our spline for our handle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a circle. And this thing is enormous, so we'll just bring this down to, let's say, one, one inch. And we'll drop both of these into a sweep nerves. That's going to give us a really fat handle. What we can do is go back into our circle spline and we can make this an ellipse. And what we'll do is we'll make the radius 0.5 and we'll make this 1. So that'll give us a really basic um, form for our handle. So what we're going to need to do is go into our sweep nerves and start editing the scale of this. So if we select our sweep nerves and the end scale, we could probably bring down slightly, something like this. Okay, let's go to our sweep nerves and let's take the end scale down a little bit more. I'm going to take the scale. So if, if we, there's this little details tab right here. If you unfold this, you can play with the curve of your scale. So you can affect how thick it is at the front and how thick it is at the bottom. So I'll just take my end scale and I'll just drag that down, grab this little handle, and drag it up. 
something like that. So then I'm going to scale that down. It'll kind of get thick in the middle and then skinny at the ends. So I'm going to create a new little node right here by holding down control and clicking. And this will allow me to grab the beginning of my, my uh, sweep nerves and make that a little bit skinnier. And I can control that as well with this little handle. Okay, so that's the basics. And we can always go back into our front view. And in our spline, we can go to our point mode and continue to manipulate our spline. So if I take these points and I move them out a little bit, go back into my sweep nerves, I'll just make that end really thin, something like that. Go back into my spline, move that in slightly. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so there's also a second method if you wanted to create this handle. So I'm going to show you a different way. Well, pretty much the same method, but if you wanted this handle to come out from the side. So I'm going to duplicate this by holding down Command and duplicating my handle. And I'll just turn off the first one. Okay, so if we wanted this spline to come out, if we wanted the handle to come out of the side of the um, actual picture, what I would do is uh, I would grab this node of our spline and I'd bring that down. Uh, I'd bring this one up and probably move this over and then I'll go back into my handle and then I'll control the scale of this so the beginning of this will be pretty fat and then we'll bring this down a little bit just like that and I'll bring this over maybe bring this one up something like that and then I'll just continue to play with my my nodes so I'll grab this one and you'll, you'll notice when you when you're when you're playing with the second point uh, it's actually going to control how this first one right here here I'll zoom in a little bit it's going to control this first point the the rotation so if I push this down it's going to kind of push that that uh, that sweep nerves up a little bit all right so I'll just grab both of these I'll push them both up, push them over, and make sure it's not going through the glass. It's looking pretty good. And what you'll have to do at this point is probably just grab this little point and just rotate it a little bit. Make that curve a little bit nicer. I'll go into my move tool and I'll just drag these handles out a little bit. So that's the second method of creating that handle. All right, at this point what I would do is um, I already went through and created an environment and a tabletop and everything. So I'll just turn everything on. Here's my camera. I created a sky, put an HDRI image in there. I put everything on a layer, turned it off, and I could turn on my tabletop. I added an infinite light. I'll turn that back on in a little fill. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a glass material from the content browser. I'll drop it on my handle. Actually, I'll rename that handle. And I'll drop it right on my picture as well. Okay, at this point what I'll do is I'll set up my render settings. So I'll go into here, specify my output. I'm just outputting this at 1920 by 1200, 72 dpi. A save, I'll specify a multi-pass image save. Turn on my multi-pass. Go to multi-pass, add image layers, uh, anti-aliasing, I'll turn on the best, and add some add an ambient occlusion effect right from here. Alright, and then we'll take a render of this. Okay, so here's our fully rendered uh, scene. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my multi-pass image that I saved out of uh, Cinema 4D and I'll open it up with Photoshop and just do some minor post-production tweaks. So let's open this up with Adobe Photoshop. Uh, the first thing that I'll do is I'll jump into the, uh, the multi-pass renders. I'll just turn all these off and then figure out which ones I'm going to need. So shadow we'll need, ambient caustics, ambient and caustics we won't need. So I'll just delete those. 
global illumination. I didn't turn that on in Cinema 4D, so I'll delete that. Ambient occlusion I'll leave on. Reflection I'll leave on. Refraction. Um, atmosphere, I could just delete those. So th the next thing that I'll do is I'll just organize my layer stack. So I just make a group, call this multi-pass. Uh, so right now, I'm gonna duplicate this image. And then I'm gonna flatten this image. One thing I'm going to do is grab this flattened image and just put it right on my uh, on top of my layer stack over here in Photoshop. And then I'm going to go through and add a blur to this. So I'll rename this layer Blur. So let's go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And 2.2 looks pretty good. At this point, we'll add a uh, layer mask to this. Select B on the key or hit B on the keyboard to bring up the brush tool, resize it. Now we can go in and paint away some of these areas so the uh, glass is really nice and sharp and in focus and everything else around it is a little bit blurry. Next step after that is I'll add a little bit of a light glow. So I'll create a new layer and I will pick a like yellowish orangey type of color. I'll set this layer to soft light. I'll just paint a little bit of light in here, almost like the sunlight is influencing these colors a little bit. And then I'll just take this opacity, bring it down slightly. I'll create one more layer, and I'll do the same thing for the shadows. I'll make it, uh, for the shadow areas, I'll put this on a soft light. And then I'll pick a bluish type of color for the shadows, something like this. I'll hit B on the keyboard and paint in some blue areas for the shadows. It's a bit heavy handed right now, so what I'll do is I'll take the opacity down, paint a little bit more over here, and I'll bring this first one, the first light area down a little bit. Uh, then I'll add a curves adjustment layer on top of this. Curves adjustment, the first thing that I'll do Let's just zoom in so we can see the entire image. So then I'll go up to my blue channel and I'll just give it a little bit of a blue lift in the shadows. I'll go up to my red channel, give it a little bit of a red lift. And I'll go to my RGB channel and I'll just increase the lightness of this image a little bit and add a little bit of contrast to it. All right, the last step is I'm gonna create a border. So let's just rename this border and I'll pick a dark color from somewhere inside the image, something like this, kind of desaturate it a little bit. I'll hit G on the keyboard for the paint bucket tool, and then I'll put this on a multiply blend mode. At this point, I can hit M on the keyboard for my marquee, just make a selection around this like that, go up to filter, or selection rather, modify feather, and I'll specify 100 pixel feather, and I'll hit B for my brush tool. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna make a layer mask, and then I'll go select, reselect, and then I'll paint with black on this layer mask to give it a little bit of border. Deselect that, maybe turn down the opacity of this. And that's our final image. And that's what it looks like. So this is uh, Pete Merrick with Triplet 3D. Hope you enjoyed this lesson, and thanks for watching.